Young Bill Squire is going to be your master of ceremonies. It is Saturday, October 26th at the Common Ground in Medina. Casino-style gambling. DJ Pauly Moist is going to be spinning. Disco Inferno is going to play live. And Bill will be your host. There are VIP tables available. Tickets and info and everything else at medinaoddfellows.org. So this pair of tickets for you to be there. Work on your costume. It's a thousand bucks on the line. A good luck car 10. These are yours. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Let's be real. Sleeping with your teacher is hot. Just be careful if you're homeschooled. Mom, stop it. Now back to the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Oh, boy. Man, I'm really wobbly today. I don't know what's going on. I'm like super dizzy today. Oh. I was going to pass out in this commercial break. Oh, we should just, we should leave. So now, you can shut up, Mary. So you can make sure you have the proper health We're out care. tomorrow. We're out Friday. I'm getting preempted by the Guardians on Monday. I'm just I, I can't even do a show on Monday. We've got playoff baseball. We're not doing any show on Monday? No, I'm running like 90 minutes of best of, and then the Guardians start at 3.30. You're on vacation anyway. Yeah, you're gone all next week. I know, but I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just saying, Alan, your uh, health uh, is important, uh, and we need to I know. You... I know it is. I, I'm not... just really, really wobbly today, and I don't know why. But Would think of how many you? people are like, oh, Alan's wobbly today. He might pass out on air. We better tune in. Okay. <laughs> but if they hear me say that, they're already tuned in. No, but they 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 they're saying it to other people. They're calling. Oh, they're telling friends. other yeah, people. They're going, they're going. Oh, hey, Alan might Alan pass, might pass out. out. They go. You, who? Better, you better turn on. I don't know who show. that is. I don't listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, next week on the show, I will have Dane Cook tickets for you. This will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because I'm also already out next Friday. So and now we don't know what the schedule is. Right. So who knows? So now we're down to yeah. three days next week with the Guardians. Yeah. I will have more tickets for you for Bill's thing with Oddfellows Medina. I will have Dane Cook tickets for you. He's doing the 24th at the Akron Civic Theater. Uh, One Dark Night. That's a big Halloween performance at the Agora. A a, mu- uh, I'll read it for you. A musical gathering of freaks, geeks, and fans of all things horror and Halloween. And then Guar tickets. And passes for the haunted schoolhouse and laboratory Ooh. down there in Akron, Ohio. So that's all next week. What were you saying? Uh, oh, I had a meeting oh. with the people last night for the Medina Oddfellows, and I am very excited about that. It's going to be a very good time. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like it. Yeah. They're... Now, what did you have to meet with them about? They like? Oh, uh, um, we were just kind of. Did they need to down. okay your costume? No. Oh. But they did like the idea. Mm-hmm. I have a good one. I'll reveal it later. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, we uh, just went over, like, the events of the evening. There's going to be a lot of uh, auction stuff, silent auction and actual, like, an auctioneer and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty good. Wait, it's going to be silent stuff. or they're going to have an auctioneer? They're going to have both. Oh, both. A loud yeah. and a silent yeah. auction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, there be hog calling. No, but there it is Medina. I believe there will be a Michael Jordan signed jersey. Oh, that's oh. pretty sweet. Will there be a Michael Jordan I'm costume not. contest? Oh, I mean, you can dress up as him. But we should probably tell people: yeah. don't do the full Jordan. Don't do that. What if you're black? Be fr- well, then fine. But uh, in any other situation, don't do that. Gene from Parma called. He's very excited for Halloween. Oh, last year for Halloween, I had a little kid come to my house dressed as a pirate. And I said, where are your buccaneers? And he said, behind my bucket hat. Gene from Parma. <laughs> Gene so, from Parma. So, so, I love it. Under my bucket hat. How about that? Gene from Parma. Swinging in on a chandelier. He's burying the lead, though. You know who that kid was that went to his door last year dressed as a pirate? Who's that? It was me. My costume was so good that he thought I was a kid, Bill. And I was doing the I was doing the dwarf thing. So I walked up to the door with my knees on, on my knees shoes. On shoes. That's yeah. right. And he said, under I said, under my bucking hat. How do you like that? 
I got more money for you in a few minutes. About five, to be precise, $1,000, about 30 past every hour. Boy, I wonder why I feel like the way I do today. What'd you eat? I had a sa- I actually yeah. had lunch today. Like, I had a salad. I had um, my protein shake this morning. I've been drinking water. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're getting I, sick. I've been, no, I don't feel like that. It's just I kind of feel like a bobblehead today. Like, I'm really wobbly. Like, I'm kind of dizzy. I've been up later than I normally am the past couple of nights, but I don't know that that's little, got anything to do with it. A little sleep deprived, also. You but know, I always that- feel sleep deprived. Like, I don't ever feel like I got a good night's sleep. Did you have a lot of caffeine? Today? I haven't mm-hmm. had any. Oh, maybe that. Do you normally? Not really. Mm. Uh, I did yesterday, I guess. But, I mean, you know. That could be something. Mm hmm. Uh, well, is it because like you're a uh, homosexual? <laughs> I hadn't thought about that, okay, but th- there's that guy who's mm-hmm. constantly, I don't think that he's been leaving messages today either. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. what would that have to do with me being feeling dizzy? I don't, know. I don't feel hot or anything like that. It's just if I move my head from side to side, well, stop I feel that. like I'm going <laughs> to... All right, if I move my head at all. I have to move my head. I mean, a it's little on. Bit, but you got to move it like I don't the way move you like were. this. Oh, I feel so dizzy when I do this. It's terrible. Oh, does it's your, awful. Does your heart feel okay? Does it feel yeah, like my your heart feels heart fine. Is racing or pounding or anything like it, that. It goes like four beats a minute. It doesn't do much. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, so it feels normal. No, nothing like that. That's what I mean. That's why I can't zero in on what's happening because the only thing is like the dizziness. It's do not you even smoke meth. Oh, damn it. Nah, I you always do. forget. You know what? I knew that if I workshopped it with you guys, we'd figure it out. That's exactly what it was. They say meth ain't that bad. Yeah, that guy says that, but I have learned. No, I didn't smoke meth. Oh, you didn't? Okay. No, I was kidding, I'm all Bill. about ideas. I, I was joking around. I was just okay. joshing right. about the methamphetamine. Mm-hmm. No, I don't know. How are you feeling, Mary? You were under the weather. I'm still or are under the weather. Yeah, I still have like a stuffy nose, and when I wake up in the morning, I have to like clear it all out. You know, it's Blech. nasty, and mm-hmm. green Blech. in there, mm-hmm. and then uh, my ears are acting up. But oh, I'm hoping it's not going to be too bad. Well, those have been going around too. I've been talking ears? to uh, uh, ears have been going <laughs> around. Yeah, bucking ears, uh, according to G from Parma. <laughs> no, people getting uh, grown ups getting ear infections. Oh, I hope it's not. I was I, I was infection a few years ago, and it was the honestly worst. It's terrible. That might be it, Ellen. Your your center of balance is in your ear. So if you feel dizzy and wobbly, it could be something with your ears. I guess it could, but again, I, 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 as a kid, I was prone. I was never sick or anything, but if I got anything, it was an ear infection, and those things make you want to cut your head off. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel anything like that. Maybe it's maybe you're right. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> we're gone the next couple of days, or uh, you know, maybe something will happen there. I don't know. But today, it's just very, very weird. It's very, it's a very strange sensation. I don't really? feel, I don't no feel under the medication. Nothing like that. I'm not on. Take? I don't take medications. No, I'm not on any prescriptions or anything. So I don't. Um, no, it's just been. Um, I don't know. That's why I, I couldn't figure out what was happening. Maybe the meth. Uh, maybe. Um, I'm falling for that again. You already said it was a joke. <laughs> but maybe I was joking then. Oh. Well, now maybe I'm all I was, confused. Now I'm the one that's spinning. Doing the old switcheroo. <laughs> oh, that guy. Bill and Mary are going to be at a festival, comedy festival, in northwest Arkansas. Mm-hmm. The NWA. And speaking of Arkansas, this is more southwest Arkansas. This is a town called Gurdon. It's 90 minutes from Little Rock. And everybody laughed at this guy a couple of years ago. Everybody had a good old hoot over Willie McNabb. How do I kill the 30 to 50 feral hogs that run into my yard while my small kids play? Everybody, ha, 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 this guy, 30 to 50, we did it too. 30 to 50 feral hogs got to be like a meme and a phrase. Well, guess what? He did it. Feral hogs are back in Arkansas. So these hogs are having the last laugh, and they're taking over this small town. And now everybody's thinking about Willie McNabb because he was right. And now what are they going to do? He's living through an inconvenience no one wants to have. Five days ago, he noticed his yard was pulled apart by wild hogs. I had minimal damage, a little bit up on the ditch edge, 
and a very little down there in the in the other part of the yard but as the days continue they have done more damage taking over a good portion of that backyard holly says he believes the hogs are finding their way into the yards of many due to clear cutting dry weather and prolific breeding causing damage like this in front yards and even the local cemetery what they do is their front leg has basically one prolific up. breeding in the local cemetery that means yeah. these feral hogs are banging it out on mm -hmm. like gravestones mm. and stuff yeah. Man, that's baller. That's punk rock. They bend that knuckle down, put the, lay that on the ground, and then they go down, and that's when they use their snout to do all their devastation, digging for grubs and roots and whatever they're looking for to feed on. While Holly works to clean up this pigsty, he's worried about one thing. Problem is, we're afraid they're going to come back. That's why the Arkansas Department of Agriculture has initiated the Feral Hog Eradication Task Force, aimed at providing Arkansans like Holly with solutions to remove the public nuisance. The Feral Hog Task Force is out there. Now, like I said, this is southwest Arkansas, right? You're closer to Little Rock, almost to Shreveport. You guys are going to be in Bentonville? Where are you going to be? Yeah, Bentonville. Yeah. In the NWA? Yep. Are you concerned at all about the proliferation of feral hogs in northwest Arkansas? Will really. you get, no? You won't get so. there and ask if they have a feral hog eradication task force? I mean, we can ask. Never uh, heard that, ask. If you will. Because all, all if, I say is Hakuna Matata. if 30 to 50 feral hogs are bearing down in this guy's property, it might be worth looking into. Imagine what the stories you'd have, though, if you were doing a comedy show. Is this an outdoor thing or an indoor thing? Indoor. I think it's indoor. Imagine if uh, the festival was overrun with, I don't know, let's say 30 to 50 feral hogs. You'd have a hell of a story. How was the festival? Hog wild. We were, <laughs> we were in hog heaven. Anyway, we're trying to heckled. figure that out. We have some bureau chiefs uh, in the great state of Arkansas, so there you go. We got some people in Little Rock, and again, you know, like I said, we all laughed at Willie McNabb, ha ha ha, but he knew something we didn't know. These feral hogs, albeit adorable, let's not lie, very real threats, right? They really jam up your farmland, as it were, and they carry diseases. They like can what? put you in a state of, as the name implies, dis-ease. So while you guys are there, I'm merely thinking of your well-being. Mary's already under the weather. Don't get any. Don't get near any hogs. Try not to. They can carry diseases. Here's money, and then we'll get to Mayor Science Fair. Oh, are you ready? Yeah, it's short. Just so you know. That's fine. Doesn't have to be any length. One thousand dollars here from the Buzzard Bookie. You get these about thirty past every hour. So last couple. Uh, for the day here on this program. And so listen closely, and I hope you win. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Cash. That's cash. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Before we get into the science, let me get into the science from the listeners. Oh. Maybe being gay made you dizzy. Oh. I mean, I'm not gay. Alan, my daughter, got sent home because she was feeling dizzy. Other people have said vertigo. I don't feel anything in my ears. May you probably have too much lib in your equilibrium. <laughs> <laughs> I am a lefty. That's funny. Maybe your face has gotten so large it's throwing off your equilibrium. Oh. That could be it. I just put all of your symptoms into WebMD, and it says that you're gay <laughs> is what that says. Dizziness might be low vitamin D. No, I take vitamin D every day. Weather change the pressure in the atmosphere. Maybe it's affecting your sinuses. My sinuses don't feel it. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to crowdsource this, but I'm always, you know, curious what uh, things are happening to our customers. All right, Mary, are you ready? Do you need ready? any preamble here? Any setup? Anything nope. like that? Okay. Now it's time for... Whether you were a fan of BET's Comic View in the 90s or just listened to Bill yesterday at the end of the show, we've all heard the phrase, women be shopping. 
Well, it's a hack <laughs> joke at this point. <laughs> <laughs> While it's a hack joke at this point, there are plenty of studies and overdue credit card statements to prove it. Sure, in the United States, women are directly or indirectly responsible for up to $14 trillion, or 80% of consumer spending per year. But are we biologically predisposed to this behavior? Disposed, I apologize. To this behavior. Daniel Kruger, an evolutionary psychologist at the University of Michigan, argues that it's natural for women to love to shop and men to hate it because of our evolutionary past. Men were the hunters in our ancestral cultures, so when they find like a satisfactory specimen, whether it's an elk or a pair of shoes, they want to shoot it and get it before it gets away. Women, by contrast, were the primary gatherers in the early hunter-gatherer culture, so they feel a need to check on every berry in the bush to make sure they're getting the best deal. So, ladies, next time your man gets on your case about spending habits or how long it takes to make it through Target or if you really need an entire new living room set up for each season, just remind him that you are simply fulfilling your gatherer instincts and it's literally not your fault. That's it. <laughs> Oh yeah, post shit, post make her work for it. Uh, she was shopping for an outro. Science is a liar sometimes. All right, well there you go. There you go. Women be shopping because, because we of were, science. Because we of were science. the gatherers. Uh huh. And men were the hunters. Okay. Interesting, huh? Alan, maybe it's low blood sugar. Drink some Mountain Dew and see if you feel better. There you go. Oh, I don't want to do that, Bill. Uh, if I have to, I have to. Doctor's orders. No, today was going to be all water, so I'm going to stick with that, and I'm, uh, whatever. Alan, what you're describing sounds like a condition called gay vertigo. <laughs> all right, boy, people are really, people have gotten really comfortable with that stuff. Now the pound cake's not around to scream them into submission anymore. Is that well, what he would do? <laughs> nature abhors a vacuum. I mean, come on. That's your science right there. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, that is interesting, though. The hunter-gatherer thing? Yeah. I think that's interesting. I thought so, too. Now, I don't know if that'll uh, work as uh, a defense in a modern-day relationship. Well, but uh, guys have come up with dumber stuff than that. Literal science. Yep. So the guy at Michigan University said so. And go to. blue. I have to. There was a bunch of like interesting articles. I mean, some of them were annoying. It was like about the shopping habits of men and women, but it all came back to like women take longer and don't have a problem because it's like, yeah, they were we're we've biologically done this since the beginning of time, where you do have to inspect to make sure each berry isn't going to kill your family. That's why you want to spend so much time at the rack, right? Or in the produce section, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever Any kind it may of shopping. be. Yeah, yeah. Make sure those of... make sure those berries or that new dress you want won't kill your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The dress specifically. Yeah. You've heard the phrase dress to kill? I sure have. That's where it came from. Yeah, yeah. From the hunter gatherer. Pliocene era. All right, good. Uh congratulations. Well done. Thanks. Alan, I heard you can cure yourself by eating eating a whole banana rectally. It's not eating, no, right? It's yeah. Yeah. That would be in inserting it. It'd be soaking a banana. I don't think that'll work. I don't, don't try that. Well, too late. I've already. Oh. Had, I've already. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> already started. No, no. Well, no, I've already peeled it. Mm. I've already peeled it, and once the launch sequence has been uh, started, I can't stop it. So Anytime we'll... my head feels dizzy, it's usually. Food or beverage related. Food or beverage related. Either not enough or something different or something new. I mean, most or... days I barely eat anything. So today where I actually did and I've been kind of, I mean, hopefully I, I haven't gotten to the point where when I do uh, things I'm supposed to do, my equilibrium gets thrown off. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. I'll be fine. You're going to make it. I'm going to make it. The show must Something, Angus something, or... something. Oh. Something, something, something. Okay. I've got Sonic Temple passes for you after this break. It's coming up uh, the 8th through the 11th of May. So we're going to be sitting on these uh, until next spring, but it's Metallica and Rob Zombie and Alice in Chains and Alice Cooper and Kill Switch and Chevelle and Testament and Obituary and blah, blah, blah. 100-plus bands going to be out there. I will have the four-day 
stadium passes for you. GA weekend passes. They are up to four days now at Sonic Temple down there in Columbus. So if you hit me up for those, I'll have them after the break. 35192. Text me for anything else. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. 